welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna to be sharing the recipes for some of my favorite healthy, no sugar added pies. I've been making these pie recipes for years, ever since I started eating healthier. These are some of the recipes that I've been making for my family Christmases and Thanksgivings and stuff. If you're new to this channel, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of my future videos. I make healthy recipe videos like this one and I also do meal preps and other cooking related videos. So make sure you're subscribed and give this video a thumbs up before you go. And let's just hop into these recipes. The first recipe I'm gonna be making is a chocolate fudge pie, which is one of my favorite dessert recipes to make. I make this recipe on my birthday pretty much every year instead of a birthday cake. I've been making this chocolate fudge pie. This recipe is actually from Chocolate Covered Katie, which is a healthy recipe desserts blog. And I've kind of tweaked it to make it how I like it, but I will link the original recipe in the description box. The base of the recipe is actually tofu, which you can't even taste it in the recipe, but it gives it like a firm, fudgy texture. Um, and then I'm also gonna be using sugar-free chocolate chips, but you could use like any type of chocolate you want. These ones from Whole Foods work really well. These are also sugar-free and they're only like $5, so I love these. Before we actually begin, we have to make our healthy pie crust. So I'm gonna share the recipe that I use in most of my pies when I, when I make pies, which not very often, but this is the one I use. So for my pie crust recipe, to a food processor, add 3 fourths cup of walnuts along with 3 fourths cup of almonds, five pitted dates, make sure they're room temperature so they're not super hard, and then a half a cup of rolled oats, and I'm making this pie crust chocolatey, so I'm adding two tablespoons of unsweetened cocoa powder. And you can also add in a pinch of salt to really bring the flavors together. And then add in about one to two tablespoons of water until it all starts to stick together and forms a ball when you squeeze it. And that is it. That is how I make my super easy, healthy pie crust. I am going to line my pie crust with parchment paper. And I just watched a video on how to make a parchment paper, a perfect circle. Make a circle, but like kind of make it a little bit bigger. Like angle your pencil away from it. Fold it in half. And cut out your circle. This is now an arts and crafts channel. And it makes a perfect circle, perfect for your pie pan. And then you're gonna take your pie crust ingredients and press it into your pie pan. Actually, what you can do, take this back out, what you can do is roll it out right on top of the parchment paper. This makes it super easy. Then you can just lift it right on top of your pie pan. Look at that, it's perfect. And you can just trim off any excess around the edges and roll it into a fudge ball. And this is a no-bake pie filling recipe, so I'm gonna pre-bake the crust at 350. I'm gonna put this in the oven and start working on our pie filling. So while the crust is cooking, I'm gonna start working on our chocolate fudge pie filling. So to a microwave safe dish, add in one and a half cups of chocolate chips. My favorite way of melting chocolate is in the microwave. You just put it in for 30 second intervals and stir it every time the 30 seconds is up until it's completely smooth. So I'm gonna go melt these in the microwave. So now you just blend up the pie filling ingredients in a blender. This is 12 ounces of soft tofu and the one and a half cups of melted chocolate. One teaspoon of vanilla. I'm gonna use my vanilla bean powder. To make it extra dark chocolatey, you can add in another tablespoon of cocoa powder. But the chocolate chips I'm using are dark chocolate, so I'm gonna just leave it out for now. Since this is dark chocolate, to make sure it's not so bitter, I'm gonna add in a few dates. This is five pitted dates. Just a little bit of liquid. And you can also add in peanut butter if you wanna make a peanut butter chocolate pie. And that's really good too. So let's blend this up. 
This is how my pie crust turned out. It's been cooling for a few minutes. I'm gonna pour my pie filling in here. And then just smooth it out so it all is nice and even. And here is my finished chocolate fudge pie. I'm gonna let this set up in the fridge for a few hours until it's nice and firm. And I'm also gonna make a cashew cream to go on top of it. So I'll show you what it looks like when it's nice and firm. And in the meantime, we can start working on our second pie. I've got more recipes for you. For my next recipe, I'm gonna make a date sweetened pecan pie. I used to love pecan pie, so this recipe is a healthier version. There's no corn syrup and it's sweetened with dates. First, I'm gonna make the crust. It's gonna be pretty much the same crust that I made in my last pie without the cocoa powder. I did the same circle thing from my last pie. I just cut my parchment paper into a circle and I'm gonna dump out my pie crust. I'm gonna do the same thing and just like roll out my pie crust. And let's make sure this fits. And it's perfect, just perfect. I'm gonna set this aside while we make the filling. Okay, so here I have about 12 pitted medjool dates that I soaked in boiling water for a couple hours. There's like syrupy liquid left over and you're just gonna use the dates and the liquid. Liquid. <coughs> Wid. Excuse me. So pour this in the blender along with some vanilla extract, one third of a cup of almond butter. For my thickener, I'm gonna use some cornstarch, but you can also use arrowroot starch. You can use either or. I'm gonna do two tablespoons, along with two tablespoons of flax seeds. Ground flax seeds. Pecan pie is usually like really sweet. It's basically just all like corn syrup and like butter. So to make this more accurate, I'm gonna add in this brown sugar monk fruit. I was super excited when I saw this at Whole Foods because I wanted to try it out. I'm just gonna add in a couple more scoops and next I'm just gonna blend this up to my bottom of my pie crust. I'm gonna add some chopped pecans and then pour your filling on top. Spread it all out. Peas in a can pie. I'm gonna top it off with some pecans. Pecans. And I like to do it really pretty. Yay, my pecan pie. Okay, now I'm gonna put this in the oven at 350 and I will show you what it looks like when it's done. For my last recipe, I'm gonna make a very cherry berry crumble. I love this recipe because you don't have to make a pie crust. This is my favorite berry blend to use. It is Trader Joe's Very Cherry Blend. Very Cherry Berry Blend. This is a very cherry berry pie. No, it's a crumble. Okay, so I have two pounds of my Very Cherry Berry Blend that I microwaved for a couple minutes. So you don't have to do this if the berry sweetness is enough for you on its own. Um, but I'm gonna do a quarter cup of monk fruit sweetener just to make it more like a classic berry crumble filling. Normally, I looked up other berry crumble recipes and they usually call for a cup of sugar, which that would just be like way too sweet for me. So I think a quarter cup of monk fruit should be a nice compromise or you could do date syrup, or you could just chop up some dates and add them in there. My very cherry berry pie. Next, I'm adding in two tablespoons of arrowroot starch as a thickener and mix up 
our pie filling. My favorite cherry berry pie filling. I was gonna make like a classic berry pie with like, like a nice lattice crust, but I doubted my abilities, so that's why I'm just making a crumble. It's a very cherry berry Christmas crumble. Pour the very berry cherry mixture into our brownie pan. Next, we have to make our crumble. You gotta say it like that too. Crumble. One cup of oats. I'm adding in a quarter cup of whole wheat flour. You could process half these oats into flour if you are gluten-free. Then to my crumble topping, I'm gonna use some date syrup. You could also use maple syrup or just more monk fruit sweetener. But I've made this um, date syrup before in granola and it worked out really good. So I'm gonna use it again in this crumble topping. A little bit of vanilla and my favorite raw almond butter. and mix this all together. I'm gonna add in just a little bit of this oat milk, oat and seed milk. Oops. And then I'm just going to disperse this on top of my crumble. I'm gonna use my hands a little. Bake at 350 for 30 minutes until the berries start to bubble. And this is how my very cherry berry Christmas crumble turned out. It was so delicious. This is definitely my new favorite dessert recipe. I will be making this a million more times. I didn't get a very aesthetic picture of it, but I topped it off with some of the cashew cream and it really was the icing on the cake. It was so delicious. Highly recommend making my very cherry berry Christmas crumble. <laughs> that is it for today's video. Thank you so much for joining me and making pies with me today. The recipes for today's pies will be in the description box down below if you want a written out copy. Make sure you like this video and subscribe before you go, and I will see you in my next video. Thanks for watching. Bye!